Usher Audio has returned, and it looks like they brought Sexy back with them. So in case you're not familiar with who Usher Audio is, they're a Taiwanese hi-fi loudspeaker manufacturer that hit the scene in a pretty big way in the mid-2000s. And for quite some time, they were very popular until around 2011, the company fell off the radar. But it looks like they're back, so what we're going to do today is we're going to take a look at their latest loudspeaker to enter the lineup, the Usher SD500 bookshelf speaker. Let's talk about it. Okay, so here they are, and as usual, before I talk about how they sound, I'm gonna briefly summarize what you get from the Usher SD500s. So let's start off by acknowledging the obvious. These are attention-grabbing speakers. I mean, guys, these are the kind of products that you need to experience in person in order to appreciate the quality of the fit and finish because when you look at them in real life, I mean, they are absolutely stunning. And it's not just about the gloss finish. It's also about the metal flake within the paint that helped to give the speaker this luxurious and rich aesthetic. I mean, it just makes it interesting to look at. And beyond that, you also have really good build quality. These are solid little speakers that weigh next to 20 pounds a piece. Now, let's shift our attention towards the design. So what you're looking at is gonna be a two-way front ported base reflex design that use drivers that are designed in-house by Usher in Taiwan. So let's take a closer look at those drivers. Up top, we are gonna have their pride and joy, a one inch DMD tweeter. So what this is, is a metal driver. I don't know whether it's titanium or aluminum, it was never clarified to me. But either way, you have this metal driver and on either side of the driver, you have a diamond coating. Well, more like an amorphous diamond coating, which is essentially the combination of little diamond crystals that are bonded together under extreme heat. Nonetheless, Usher has gone this route because they like the rigidity of the material along with the low mass, which they feel helps to result in great sound quality. Beneath that, we have a five and a quarter inch fiber woofer only. On the website, they also list it as being five inches. So when I took out the measuring tape, I noticed that no, they're not even five inches. They're more like four and three quarters inches. And you know what? This is the third speaker in a row that I've come across that has exaggerated the size of the woofer. I almost feel like this girl or guy that's been lied to one too many times where the guy's like, you know, girl, I'm about average, but you know, it's, it's good. I know what I'm doing. And the girl's like, okay, okay, I can get down with that. I can... Wait, what'd you say it was again? I mean, that's me right now. But anyways, moving on. On the bottom, we have our slotted ports. So let's turn the speaker around. And on the back, you're gonna notice this high quality plate with our five-way binding post. This speaker is bi-wire capable if that's what you're into, but that about wraps it up with the DS500. So now let's talk about how it sounds. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. They come with these magnetic cloth grills, but let's be honest. Do you really want that over a speaker that looks this good? Yeah, I didn't think so. Let's talk about the sound. Okay, so when it comes to performance, think of it like this. The SD500 is a small speaker that's more about quality than quantity. It's meant to go in a small to medium sized room and it sounds best when attached to high quality components while playing back good to excellent sounding recordings. So if you're hoping that this is gonna be some small speaker that sounds way bigger than what it is or something that's gonna sound good with every genre of music regardless of the recording quality, then you're gonna be disappointed in the sound. So to explain what I mean, let's dive into the details starting with the character. So when you listen to these speakers, a few things are gonna immediately jump out at you. You're gonna notice how detailed and refined it sounds. You're gonna notice how spacious it sounds, but most importantly, you're gonna notice how Usher really, really wants you to hear that tweeter because the entire presentation is is built around the top end. And this creates a unique voicing situation because on one hand, the top end is not rolled off whatsoever. In fact, it's bumped up and it's gonna have this lively character and sense of occasion to the sound. Yet, when you sit back and you listen to them, the sound is nonetheless laid back, and that's because they don't project sound in an aggressive way. 
So when you're sitting back and you're listening to them, you're gonna notice that yes, the sound is lively, but it still sounds like the presentation is gonna be more or less limited to the physical plane of the loudspeakers. Moving on, we have the mid-range and the bass, which take on this very quick and agile presentation, yet there's richness there, which helped to give it some body and character. And that leads me to the individual elements of the presentation, starting with the treble. So the treble is hands down the star to show with this speaker, and for a good reason. If you haven't heard a diamond tweeter, then it's like offering the best of what metal domes have to offer with few of the drawbacks. So that effortless speed and detail and clarity, that airiness and that spaciousness that people like so much about metal domes, excuse me, is all present with this speaker, only with mitigated drawbacks. That metallic tone doesn't saturate everything that you're listening to like it does with most metal domes. I mean, it's still there, but it's not quite as obvious. And that peakiness and that harshness that can sometimes to be present is almost completely gone. Now, don't get me wrong, this isn't a forgiving sounding top end presentation. If you're gonna listen to Blink 182 or Eminem through these speakers, you're probably not gonna like what you hear. But if you have, as I mentioned before, good to excellent sounding recorded material, you're gonna be treated to top end that honestly sounds like it belongs on speakers that cost a lot more money. Now let's move on to the mid range. So the mid range is gonna have a small dip at the crossover point as you would expect with any two way monitor. But the rest of the mid range is actually gonna be fairly quick sounding, very articulate sounding, and is gonna be more about giving you tonal accuracy via speed than this artificial sense of fullness. For example, when you listen to this speaker and you compare it to the Harbeth P3 ESR, the Harbeth P3 will sound a little bit fuller in the mid-range and just a little bit more natural with human voice, but this speaker is no slouch and it's not too far behind a Harbeth in terms of natural timbre. Now, when it comes to comparing it to the Bacard S400, the Bacard S400 by comparison has this big and meaty presentation, so there's a sense of scale and density that the Bacard has that this speaker doesn't, but this speaker is gonna be quicker. And when it comes to timbre, especially acoustic instruments, this guy's gonna actually sound just a little bit more natural. So the mid-range is gonna be pretty good. Now it's not gonna be visceral, so if you listen to rock and roll and you're listening to music that requires this dense, full sound in the mid-range, it's not gonna have that whatsoever. Anyways, moving on to the bass, there's not gonna be a whole lot of it. I mean, like the mid-range, it's clear, it's fast, there's just not a whole lot of impact there. In fact, the bass isn't much better than what you're gonna get out of the Harbeth P3 ESR. So the good news is, at least the bass has gradual roll off, which means if you plan on integrating it with a sub, which I would definitely recommend if you listen to any kind of complex music, then I would say it's gonna be a very easy thing to do. But nonetheless, this is something that you need to be aware of. Moving on, let's talk about dynamics. So you'd think that this little speaker, because it doesn't have a whole lot of bass, is gonna be pretty limited on dynamic output. And while it's incapable of giving you a visceral experience, it actually can deliver some pretty good dynamic range. And that's because the woofer isn't being taxed all the time. So that leaves you with bandwidth to handle those dynamic passages. So it's actually not too bad for a speaker of its size. Moving on, we have imaging. I mean, look, it's a little two-way monitor. Of course, the imaging is exceptional. Not only is it capable of laying down a very wide sound stage, but it can also give you a great centered focus image right in between the speakers. But here's the real thing, the depth to the sound is incredible for the money. I mean, very few speakers have this kind of layering within the sound stage, and that's really gonna be another selling point behind the Usher. So if you're into that, you're gonna really like these speakers. And you're also gonna like how easy they are to work with. It doesn't take a whole lot of power to drive them. They're not that particular about setup within a room or the kind of stands that you have them on. So they're very forgiving in that respect. So now let's talk about the musical experience. So overall, I would say these speakers sound their best on simple pieces of music, acoustic, vocals, small jazz quartets, classical, or I should say simple classical pieces. I mean, yes, you can listen to rock on them, but that's not where they sound their best. The same thing with electronic and hip hop, and you get the idea. Anything that's complex and requires just a lot of muscle, particularly within the mid range, is where you're gonna start to lose these speakers. So when it comes to equipment matching, they're very revealing, and quite frankly, they're just they're high quality speakers that deserve to be paired with high quality gear. So I wouldn't connect them to anything beneath the thousand dollar price point. I mean, something like the Morantz PM8006 is a good starting point, but really you need to be in the Dina Fritz Hestia and Hyperion territory, which is about two thousand dollars. My favorite match so far has actually been the Luxman 2 bent that I reviewed not too long ago. Even though it's only 10 watts per channel, it makes for a beautiful match with this speaker. It drives it very well, and the tonal 
total match is fantastic. It tames the top end down just a little bit, leaving you with this gorgeous top end that matches perfectly with the rest of the presentation, and it just makes for a very fun and pleasant listen. So anyways, these speakers can be exceptional when you treat them right, but let's talk about what happens when you don't. Alright, so by now it should be obvious that these speakers are definitely not going to be for everybody because number one, they don't have a whole lot of bass output. Number two, the power handling is going to be limited. This isn't going to be for somebody who likes to listen at loud volumes. It's more for the people who like to listen at low to medium volumes. And then number three, they're not going to sound great with every recording and every genre of music. They're more for simple pieces of music. Don't get me wrong, if you pair them up to subs, that's when you're going to have a lot more flexibility. But on their own, that's where they sound best. And and then number four, and I'm going to be really pedantic here, but even though I love the finish of these speakers and they really do look gorgeous in person, God, they are fingerprint magnets. So just something to be aware of. But you know what's interesting? In this day and age of jack of all trade speakers, it's almost refreshing to come across something that is old school high end. When it is good, it is exceptional. But when you don't have it set up right, then, you know, it's very unexceptional. And that leads me to my final thoughts. All right, so to wrap this up, here's the bottom line. If you're in the market for a set of $2,000 mini monitors that are like this jack of all trade solution, then you're gonna be disappointed with these speakers. However, if you're in the market for a set of $2,000 monitors that are well built, that have refined aesthetics, as well as a high end refined presentation, then there's a good chance you're really going to enjoy them and they're gonna be worth checking out. Anyways, that's gonna be my objective take on the Usher SD500. Now I'm gonna lay down my subjective thoughts. And subjectively speaking, well, number one, I love the aesthetics. I mean, this is the kind of speaker that I could have in my room and I'd be totally happy with it even when I'm not playing music because I just love how it looks. Now when it comes to sound, I also like the sound. I like how it takes this refined and revealing presentation and infuses some musicality to it. The top end isn't overly brash and then you have mid-range and bass that runs this fair balance between speed and richness. Now I do wish that the top end was toned down just a little bit and I do wish that there was just a little bit more bass to the presentation, but I understand why they've done what they've done. So what I'm going to do is at the very end of this video, I'm going to have a comparison between this this speaker and the Harbest and the Bacart, since those are more or less direct competitors. But uh, ultimately, I'll say this it's good to see Usher back into the game, and I'm looking forward to seeing more of their products in the future. Anyways, guys, that's going to be it for now. As always, thanks for watching, and until next time, peace. All right, so for this comparison, I'm gonna take three high quality two-way mini monitors and I'm gonna give you a general snapshot summary as to what each brings to the table. That way you can make a determination as to which one is best for you. So let's start off with the Bacart S400. So of the three speakers, these are gonna give you the fullest range presentation. They're gonna sound much more solid than the rest of them in terms of density. You're gonna get a lot more bass. The mid-range is gonna sound fuller, warmer, and like I said, a lot more dense. And then you're gonna have top end that is going to be inherently a little bit smoother than either the Ushers or the Harbest, but there's going to be compromise to this. Even though these are very versatile speakers that can play most types of music very well, because of that full range, they need room to breathe in order to sound their best, because if you place them next to a wall boundary, the bass can be too much of a good thing. Beyond that, if you get the placement wrong, there's a good chance that you're going to get a beamy presentation from the horn, and sometimes it could even sound thin, so it's just something to be aware of. Moving on we have our Usher SD500s. Compared to the Harbest and the Bacarts, they have a much more refined sounding top end. There's a lot more sparkle to the treble. It's easier to discern fine details and overall you're just getting this truly refined listening experience out of them. The mid-range is going to be a little quicker than either speaker and so will the bass. But the compromise with them is that they're not going to be as versatile in terms of the kind of music that they sound good with. And that leads me to the Harbeth P3 ESR. So the P3s aren't going to have that that smooth top end of the Bacarts, nor are they going to sound as expressive as the Ussers, they're going to be somewhere in between in terms of treble. Now when it comes to mid-range performance, this is where these little speakers shine. And when it comes to human vocals and instrument timbre as a whole, I would say the Harbests are still going to be the best of the bunch. Now, of course, they're small speakers, they don't have a whole lot of bass, but what they do have can be easy to integrate with the subwoofer, much like the Ushers. Now I would say that the Harbests will tend to sound best in a near-field desktop environment. 
that's where the sound comes together very well and that's where they will easily outperform the other two speakers so this is more or less what you're getting with them you have the Bacarts, that big meaty muscular sounding presentation that's going to be good with many forms of music provided you set them up right you have the ushers that refined articulate sounding speaker that isn't going to sound the best with every kind of music but when it's on it is really on and then you have the harvest a more friendly sounding speaker that's all about natural tone that really shines in the near field environment so anyways guys that is it hopefully you found this useful as always thanks for watching and until next time peace